morning and welcome to Kelly Baptist Church this Sunday morning, December the 6th, the year of our Lord, 2020. As we approach the Christmas season, the season where God came down from heaven to earth into a virgin's womb named Mary, we also find that same God, the royal king of heaven and earth, creator of all things walking the path to his cross. Last week, we were reminded in the scripture that Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem, this same Jesus, with his mother Mary following him. And we're pondering that thought, Mary, what did you know? And on this end of eternity, we have the scriptures to tell us what Mary knew. And we're informed in such a way that they weren't then. And we're going to take a shot into that scene in history this morning and see exactly what Jesus and, uh, told us and others observed in this point in time in between the triumphal entry into Jerusalem and the cross of Calvary for which Jesus came solely and purpose of, purposefully for you and for me. Let's turn in our Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 21. We'll start at verse 18. A very curious scripture. One that has puzzled mankind for decades and for centuries. Matthew 21, 18 through 21. Stand together wherever you are. We're going to read the Holy Scripture of God. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing to it except leaves. And he said to the fig tree, May you never bear fruit again. 
And immediately the tree withered. And when the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked Jesus. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea. And it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And I have a text for us this morning to read the comparable uh, gospel of Mark that accounts the very same incident. But it has a sentence to it that we need to be aware of this morning. Read with me in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 25. Mark recounts, Have faith in God, Jesus answered, after cursing the fig tree. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, let me repeat that. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this curious, mysterious action that occurred in the Bible where you yourself cursed this unburied fig tree. And then you taught us how to pray as though our prayers that we petitioned for in your name were already answered and have no doubt. May we have that kind of prayer, may we have that kind of faith, and may we have that kind of power that you offered us. I pray that this message would go around the world Lord, and bring the unbelievers to Jesus Christ. I pray in your holy name, Jesus, Son of God. Amen. A fig tree is often used symbolically in the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament to represent the nation of Israel, not the geographical boundaries of Israel, but the people, the nation, the concept of Israel, God's people. Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem. And he had cleansed the temple. And we asked you last message, has your temple been cleansed? And after cleansing the temple, which is representation for cleansing of Israel, because they had taken the worship of God and made it into a business, rather than a sacrifice. And both the cleansing of the temple and the cursing of the fig tree both refer to Israel, but they refer to you and they refer to me as well, our spiritual conditions. Jesus was effectively denouncing Israel's worship of God because it was fake. It was perfunctory. It was just something they were going through the motions and they had even taken the sacrificial worship of the sacrifices of the blood of the perfect animals and, and turned it into a prostitution of the very essence of of what sacrificial worship was meant to be. With the cursing of the fig tree, Jesus, listen to this, Jesus was denouncing Israel. He wasn't cursing that fig tree because he was hungry and there was nothing to eat. He was using it as an example of what he was going to do in the end time of what would become of Israel as a nation. He was denouncing the unfruitfulness of people who claim to follow him. Now I'm going to, this scripture is going to step on some toes this morning. This scripture is going to step on Brother Joe's toes. So if my toes can be stepped on, I think yours can too. Jesus was denouncing the unfruitfulness of people who were claiming to be Christians. The fruitful fig tree was considered to be a symbol of blessing and prosperity and the right state of the nation of Israel with regard to holy God. 
The fruitfulness of Israel was existent when they were right with God. And your fruitfulness in your life is exemplary of your relationship to God. And may I give a converse statement here. Your unfruitfulness can also be descriptive of your bad relationship or your non-existent relationship with Jesus Christ. The absence or death of a fig tree symbolized judgment and rejection. And everyone who was around Jesus knew that and he explained it to them in that way. The fig tree represented the spiritual deadness of Israel. It was useless. There were religious outward. Outwardly, that fig tree had beautiful leaves. It was bearing these big green leaves and you could see it from a distance. And may I say that the fig trees in Israel are different from what we raise here in South Louisiana. They're both figs, but they had multiple um, types of fig trees. And generally, this type of fig tree would have been one that would have borne two to three crops of figs. Now, I love figs. Hint, hint. I love figs. I love preserved figs. I'll eat a fig sandwich. But I want to tell you, the fig tree that is fruitless is useless. The Pharisees had built a reputation for this glorious robed enthroned gold and silver and braids and all sorts of habiliments that covered their bodies and that they used in the temple was a formality because there was no fruit coming out. It was all bitter poison of laws. There was no grace from heaven at this point. It teaches us this issue of the fig tree that the religious profession of those of that day had become cold and sterile and unfruitful. Listen. Listen closely. Walking down an aisle of a church does not save you. It is the choice to eternally walk with Jesus Christ and bear his fruit, not your earthly fruit, that saves you. Many, many people have walked the aisle and that's the last contact they had with Jesus Christ. They do not follow him through life and follow him through death to the death of the cross that he exemplified there at Calvary. Now I'm not trying to get anybody to question their salvation, but we all need a check now and then of how much fruit and what kind of fruit are we bearing. We're either bearing good fruit, which is what Jesus would have us to bear in society and life, or we're bearing wicked fruit, which is the fruit of the devil. There's no other kind of fruit that can be born. So many people, as I said, walk down the aisle and it stops there. They don't walk with Jesus the rest of their life. And Jesus was using this specific example because why? Because he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, as prophesied by Zechariah. And multitudes followed him. Hail him! Hail him! He's our king, Hosanna, son of David. And two days later, they were crying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Don't hail him! Nail him! What's going on in the United States that is commensurate with this picture? Well, I'm going to tell you again right now. Just like you've heard of the term rhinos, that's, that's an acronym for Republican in name only. These are people who claim to be for right to life, anti-abortions, but their fruit is not bearing that. The crowds that were following Jesus were fair weather followers. But when it came time to profess Jesus Christ as God on that cross, they walked away. Listen. Listen. Do you hear that? I hear it. It's the millions. 
It's the millions and millions of little babies whose lives have been stripped from the mother's womb and they've been murdered in the name of right to choose. And anyone who has supported that is bearing wicked fruit. Look at this picture. You're either one or the other. When Elijah stood on Mount Carmel, he said this. How long will you stand between two positions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be Baal, serve him. And uh, not a word was spoken. Folks, it's time to speak up. Listen, they tell me on the news, if you watch it, that Biden got 80 million votes. I want to tell you something. Trump supposedly got 73 million, but they didn't count the 60 million little votes that came from the spilling of the blood of 60 million babies. If every one of those had lived and could vote, I want to tell you what. They would be wearing this t-shirt. I saved lives. But we've got a man and a woman, Ahab and Jezebel, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that can't wait to get their bloody hands into the wombs of poor women and fun Planned Parenthood to kill every baby they can. That's what Jesus is talking about. You're one or the other. Don't get in this, I don't like his tweets, or I don't like his hair, or I don't like his unseemliness. It's not about him. It's about him. You're either for him or you're against him and you will be judged for every action that you take here on earth either at the Bema seat or the great white throne of judgment. Do you hear? God said when Cain slew Abel, I heard his blood screaming from the ground and the blood and the voices of 60 million babies are saying, don't kill me, don't kill the other one, save me. You're either one or the other. You're bearing wicked fruit for Satan, or you're bearing good fruit for Jesus. There is nothing in between. Are you a Christian in name only? You know what some Christians are? They're just not Muslim. That's all. You can't tell they're a Christian. You never see them at church. You never see them given in Jesus' name. You sure won't see them wearing a t-shirt that says, I save babies. Folks, Jesus is calling us out. Our walking down the aisle should be expressed by every action in our life, and we should be fearless and bold in proclaiming not just being good or having pretty leaves or keeping our yards mowed. We should be Bearing fruit, changing the world for Christ. Remember what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, for not to speak is to speak. When you are silent about Jesus, you are screaming for Satan. Not to act is to act. And that's what Jesus is telling us here. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit, your fruit, should be love, joy, Peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. This comes from the heart. The lesson of the fig tree is that we should bear spiritual fruit. And everybody who knows us should know we're a follower of Jesus Christ. If everybody you know doesn't know you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're not bearing Christ fruit. God judges fruitlessness. And expect that those who have a relationship with him will bear much fruit. This isn't Joe's words. These are the words of Jesus Christ. John 15, 5 through 8 said, listen closely. I, Jesus, am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. There is no question. That's an affirmative statement. If you are hooked into Jesus Christ, you will bear his fruit. 
If you are hooked into Satan, that vine, you will bear Satan's fruit. There's nothing in between. You're one or the other. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. And such branches, listen to this, are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. I didn't make that up. Let me read it again. The branches that do not remain in Jesus Christ are dead, thrown into the fire, and burned. And I don't want to be thrown into the fire and burned. I want to follow Jesus. I want to bear much fruit despite what society and the world say against me. If you remain in me and my words in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. When you witness for Jesus Christ, you can count on it. In the name of Jesus, it will be accomplished. If you do not doubt and believe that mountain can be thrown into the sea. Too many of us are bearing either no fruit at all or we're bearing our own fruit, not Jesus' fruit. The fig tree in the Bible was not bearing any fruit. That's what Israel was doing. It was bearing nothing. I want to ask you a frank, blunt question this morning. Like the fig tree, are you cursed? I can't answer that. You have to answer that this morning. Are you cursed? When Jesus was on the road from Bethany back to Jerusalem, he came across this fig tree that had no fruit. Let's just, in your mind's eye, take that fig tree out of the picture and put your life there. When Jesus walks along the roadway of life and he comes to you and sees your life, are you just a bunch of green leaves with no fruit? Or are you bearing fruit for him? And he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's one or the other. He's going to curse your wicked fruit or your lack thereof, or he's going to bless you. He cursed Israel because they had made up a false religion and the multitudes were crying, hail him, hail him. Yet they weren't really followers because they turned on him and said, nail him, nail him. That's what Jesus is asking you this morning. Are you going through life living for you and Jesus is either just an afterthought or no thought at all or are you living openly and proudly for Jesus Christ? Jesus said, not Joe. Jesus said, he will curse and cause to wither up those who do not bear his fruit. Matthew 16, 4 says, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Jesus told us exactly what's at the end of the book. Why would we not want to bear fruit when we already know the end, that we will be rewarded for the good fruit that we bear in Jesus' name? I want to beg you this morning. I want to plead with you this morning. Don't be a part of that wicked and adulterous generation that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 16. It yields selfish and wicked fruit. And you know if you're part of it or not. The multitudes were shouting to Jesus, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus will one day inspect the veracity and the gravity of everyone who's spoken those words. And it will be measured by the fruit we bear through our lives for him or for Satan. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Chuck Schumer, I could go down the road. They all need Jesus because the wickedness of their fruit is murder. And I want to tell you, if you want to start bearing fruit today, stand up for life. That's where it started in the 
Garden of Eden, when Cain slew Abel, God said, I hear his innocent blood screaming to me from the ground. You, want, you, you know what the number one issue of the Joe Biden Kamala Harris party is? It's right to an abortion. And there are 60 million votes that went uncounted, screaming from the ground, give us life. Jesus one day will inspect your fig tree and where you stand on life and death. Those who are not his or who bear no fruit, the Bible says, will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Do you believe me? Don't believe me. Believe Jesus' very words. He said, Matthew 7, 19, Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And I'm begging you this morning, don't be one of those trees. Accept Jesus and all that goes with salvation, that is his gift. Follow him, bear good fruit, or reap the consequences of being cut down and thrown into the fire. Jesus didn't compromise with the world. He was a polarizing figure. He divided the world in two. And he destroyed sin and he destroyed death. Our only option is to accept the grace of Jesus Christ and live for him. Have you done that today? If Jesus came to your house today to inspect your fruit, what would he find? I pray in Jesus' name you're his. If not, accept him right now. If you don't know Jesus, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I have lived a wicked life. I have not borne fruit for you. And Lord, right now, I accept your gift on the cross. I cannot work myself into heaven. I cannot pay my way into heaven. I cannot wish my way into heaven. I can only believe in Jesus Christ my way into heaven. And today, I believe and I will live for you, Lord, because you died for me. I repent of my sins. I ask you to be my Savior. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. If you've made that decision, I want you to, you welcome to call my phone number, 318-613-4145. Let me talk with you about how to continue to connect with Jesus Christ. Share this message around the world and bear good fruit for Jesus. Amen.